Johnny is an African-American male who's currently in the hospital because of a pain crisis. He's experiencing excruciating, agonizing pain and is desperate for relief. The healthcare providers disregard his discomfort. Why? Because Johnny has sickle cell and there's no cure for sickle cell. The providers simply say Johnny is drug seeking. Sickle cell disease is the most common inherited blood disorder in the United States. The abnormally shaped red blood cells blocks blood from reaching different parts of the body. Symptoms vary from anemia to a lifetime of pain to even multi-organ damage. This is most commonly seen in those of African descent and affects about 100,000 people in the United States alone. Depression is actually five times more prevalent in people with sickle cell disease than the general population. This is associated with greater stigma and greater difficulty accessing the proper health care needed. With such severe symptoms and stigma, it's understandable for moments like this to be depressing. The limited information about what happens biologically with people with sickle cell disease and their depression has led me to investigate the relationship between depression and inflammatory markers in the sickle cell disease population. In case you're unfamiliar, inflammatory biomarkers are measurable indicators that occurs when one is experiencing, let's say, pain, stress, or even fever. We hypothesize that the depression score will predict the inflammatory levels of our participants. To do this, we evaluated a variety of data, including psychological and lab data. Urethrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein are two commonly used biomarkers in clinical studies. We measured them using blood samples. In regards to bio depression, depression was measured using the Beck Depression Inventory, which is a series of 21 questions that we provide our participants, such as how often do you feel discouraged? How often do you feel sad? To our knowledge, this is the first study done evaluating depression and biomarker levels in the sickle cell disease population. As of now, we don't have any significant results, but we do see this common trend of higher inflammatory levels in the depressed sickle cell disease population compared to the non-depressed. Despite the fact that we don't have any significant results, we have plans for future directions. These include to continue collecting data from our participants and incorporating other markers, including cortisol levels and cellular telomere length, thus assessing stress and age in our participants. By analyzing these biomarkers, we will better understand the psychological and biological aspects of sickle cell disease, add to a body of research that can improve lives such as Johnny and bring hope to a community that has been treated with a lack of empathy. Thank you.